So in this next demonstration, we are going to take a look at the four chamber view, the Epico four chamber view. The marker is pointing laterally, so to the left side of the patient. And we are trying to display a nice Epico four chamber view. Always uh, be aware to not be too foreshortened. So always try to find the true apex. First of all, we see in the center the interventricular septum. This is the lateral wall of the left ventricle. Here the mitral valve and the entire left atrium displayed. We do see pulmonic veins, the left pulmonic veins, the left upper and the left lower. Here the right upper pulmonic vein, which also can be used for measurements. Here, if we apply color Doppler, we see nicely the blood entering the left atrium coming from the lungs or the, from the pulmonic veins and we can display a signal which has two peaks, a diastolic and a systolic peak. We can differentiate quite nicely in this subject. Overall, it's not always that easy to display this signal and to measure it properly. So what you should try is to find the right upper pulmonary vein because they have the best Doppler alignment, but very often it won't be possible. If it is possible, we can use it to great diastolic dysfunction or it helps us to great diastolic dysfunction, click the link in the box to get to know more about it. The next thing we are going to display is the inflow of the left ventricle with blood. You can see it here displayed with color Doppler. In color Doppler you see some kind of turbulent flow and here we have the color M mode. So additionally to the color Doppler we activate the M mode and with the combination of those two modalities, we can display the mitral valve inflow. It is very important to align the signal optimally to display optimally the inflow, so the true inflow of the left ventricle, which won't be always possible. But this measurement also can help us to grade diastolic uh, dysfunction even more or more accurate and even to calculate uh, filling pressures. Here we have a nice signal and you see this blue flame becoming yellow and red. And what we can measure is from the basis of the inflow signal to approximately 50 centimeters into the left ventricle and there we get a time. So what you can see is there is a time displayed which is in this specific situation entirely normal. To continue, we again try to visualize the blood flow into the left ventricle and adjust the signal a bit. But as you can see, it's not always an easy measurement and it has a lot of pitfalls. To continue with our assessment, we can also try and find a tricuspid regurgitation in this patient. He has a very small jet which displays the tricuspid regurgitation, so that's absolutely physiological. Now we can activate tissue Doppler. Tissue Doppler is displaying the movement of the tissue. And in this case, we can place the tissue Doppler in the annulus of the tricuspid valve in the lateral annulus and we can measure the excursion, the so-called S prime. And in his case, it's normal, it's about 0.14 meters per second or 14 centimeters per second, which is normal. The next measurement we can do for the right ventricle is the so-called TAPC, the tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. For this TAPC, you have to use the M mode and position it in the lateral tricuspid annulus and measure the excursion of the tricuspid annulus, which is also normal. In this patient, you can see that the right ventricle is contracting normally. There's also on the left side an M mode measurement, so a measurement of the left ventricle. It's the MAPC, the mitral annular plane systolic excursion. And also this excursion looks pretty normal. So the normal values of the MAPC are in between 10 to 11 millimeters, the TAPC 17 millimeters, and the S prime uh, is normal when it is above 9.5 centimeters per second. Now to continue, we use the pulse wave Doppler and place it across the mitral valve and we see a rather large E and a small A wave in this individual. 